This is The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A political leadership crisis is brewing in Portugal. For the last four years, Portugal has been led by an alliance between the Social Democratic Party, PSD, and the Democratic and Social Center People's Party, PP. Together, they ran under the banner Forward Portugal Alliance, PAF, in the October 4th elections. They are the pro-austerity, pro-Eurozone parties. Together, they garnered only 38.4 percent of the vote, which translated to only 107 seats uh, in the 230-seat parliament. But President Anibal Cavaco Silva asked them to form the government and appointed Pedro Passos Coheo as prime minister amid protests by the main opposition socialists and their allies. Now joining me to discuss all of this is Katrina Principe. She's just back from Portugal. She is a social activist from there, and she's an organizer with Left Bloc in Portugal and De Linke in Germany, which means the left. She's written for Jacobin magazine and contributed to an anthology titled Portugal 40 years after the revolution. She's currently studying and living in Germany. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So give us a sense of what is going on and what happened on October 4th in the general election. Um, so the general elections of October 4th um, ended up with an outcome that uh, basically no one was expecting at least two or three weeks before the, the day of the elections. Uh, so not only the right-wing parties that have been ruling Portugal for the last four years and applied the harshest austerity and cuts uh, measures for the last years uh, won again, uh, but the Socialist Party, which is the main oppositional party, uh, did not win, which was what we were expecting. Also, the left, uh, namely the left bloc, the party that are the party of the radical left, the party that I'm party that I'm part of, uh, we were not expecting to have such a good result. We had a historical. Um, uh, victory. We won 10 percent of the votes and we elected 19 MPs. So um, what we see today in the Portuguese parliament is a very a polarized parliament, which is actually more or less normal in times of crisis. So on the one hand, the right wing manages to win again, although not uh, reaching an absolute majority on parliament. And at the same time, the anti-austerity uh, left, so the left bloc and the Communist Party, gather almost 20 percent of the votes. So we have a polarized um, um, parliament where none of the two big parties, so the Social Democrats and the Socialist Party, is able by themselves to form a government. Um, so this means that um, also, another particular circumstance is that we will have presidential elections uh, in January. Uh, and the president of the republic cannot dissolve the parliament uh, within the last six months of his mandate. So this means this parliament has to work as it is. Um, but no, none of the two big parties got an absolute majority in order to be able to rule the country for the next years uh, in a stable way. So what happened uh, three days ago was that the president of the republic appointed the right-wing party uh, coalition uh, parties that have been ruling Portugal for the last four years to, in order to try to form a government. This was against uh, the last, during the last two weeks, the Socialist Party has reached out to the left, so both to the left bloc and to the Communist Party, in order to try to make an agreement that would um, allow them to form a government on parliament and pass a state budget for the next year that would allow Portugal to have some sort of uh, political stability for the next, at least for the next year. So, this, and, uh, so the Socialist Party is essentially proposing Antonio Costa uh, as the leader of this uh, left socialist alliance. Um, yes. Let me uh, show everyone a clip of what he had to say in protest to what is going on in terms of the appointment of the prime minister by the president. It is incomprehensible to nominate a prime minister who the president already knows does not have and will not have the conditions to form a majority in parliament. 
the president has created a useless political crisis that postpones the start of a government in full capacity and with a majority in parliament, which could assure the country the political stability that it needs. So Katrina, what is main bone of contention here? Together they can form a, uh, a majority in parliament, which would mean a much more stable government. But what is he actually um, uh, proposing to the president here? Uh, and you mean Antonio Costa, the leader of the opposition yes. party? So um, it is. Um, it has never happened in Portuguese history uh, that um, the leader of one of, of the of the party that was not the most voted one was appointed prime minister. So this would be a new thing. It's democratic. It's possible. It's within the constitution, but it has never happened. So the political tradition in Portugal has been always to appoint the leader of the winning party in to form government. This is what the president has done, and this means that next week the right-wing government that was just appointed and just formed today um, will go to uh, will have a vote on parliament and most possibly according to what we know right now uh, there will be a vote that won't allow, like a confidence vote that will that will not allow them to pass as a government so portugal will be without a government again in a week what antonio costa is saying is that because the socialist party opened a conversation with the left in order to try to establish an agreement between the three uh, left parties or center and left parties on parliament, at least for the state budget of 2016, that actually the president of the republic is choosing to appoint his own party leader as a prime minister instead of appointing a more stable or possibly more stable government of the left because he does not like neither the leader of the Socialist Party, and he's not part of his own party. Um, and very, very interesting, and I think this is a new, um, this is something new uh, that is happening in Portugal since the crisis, was the very harsh tone that the president of the republic used to say that he will not appoint the Socialist Party leader uh, so Antonio Costa as the prime minister and allow him to try to form a government on parliament because he's being supported by Eurosceptical and Eurocritical parties as the left bloc and the Communist Party. So basically what he's saying is that um, democracy is not Im as important as what the European institutions uh, decide. All right, Katrina, let's take this up in part two, the current democratic crisis uh, in Portugal and what all this means uh, for the future of Portugal in our next, next segment.